In this video help, we're going to be working on adding marketing budget data. And the key word in here is data, in that this is a point at which you're going to be estimating numbers. And when you go through the rest of the project, as far as the blue uh, buttons over here on the side for popovers, you're going to be doing additional work. Now, I'm going to cover again from the last video, this is a multiple portal. And each one of these is a different element, for example, budget uh, estimating 1.1 as far as the schedule ID number and so forth as we go through. Now the issue that you may run into when I'm going to and cite these when we are working in these, there may be a situation and I have it up here like an element bid no bid. This is a drop down with all the different kinds of elements that you might be working through but bid no bid is a situation and I'll give you an example. Uh, say we're doing civil engineering and we have a client that wants uh, the proposal to include certain things, but he did not estimate that there was going to be any survey work being done. So what happens is you start through it and you're going down through the budget elements. You put in a proposal comment that says that the client did not include a bid for the survey. Now that can be disruptive to the whole process, but you need to identify these things as you're going down through. And for example, if you're talking to this client at a meeting when you're kicking off the proposal effort and you're asking him what are the items that he didn't cover, and this is critical, you need to go ahead and say, you didn't state that you wanted to do survey. And the key question for your company is, ask why. If the client did not want the survey portion done, which is leading off the entire project, what is he doing? Does he have another client? Well, you may want to ask the question, do you want us to give you an estimated cost for that particular thing? Hence the rate, uh, reason for the budget estimate for this particular line where you might estimate through your project production group what it would take to do the survey for this particular thing. The comments down here would be outlining what the client is doing as far as needing survey. For example, maybe he's doing one or two houses or a hundred. You might want to ask the question, if we do a proposed survey and it's lower than the bid that you currently have, would you consider that being added into your project? So that's the kind of things you want to know up front before you do a lot of legwork over here to go ahead and estimate those things. So what you're doing is you're looking through his proposal to see what's missing. And we covered that before. So this is part of the presets that you want to do. For example, if you're doing a, a research or you're doing an estimating, or you're doing one of these other processes where you're going down through Start Proposal, WBS, and so forth as you're going down through, you may want to see if there are other things that are left out. And if you have a standard template, or boilerplate as it's called, you can go through and make sure that the boilerplate fits the proposal that this client is coming in with. If he's missing things, it's best to find out right at the start whether or not they're actually missing or the client omitted them for a reason. Okay, let's go ahead and go to the first project thing we're going to look at next. This is the next video we are going to be covering. It is for the project managers. Now, we're treating this a little different as far as the managers are concerned because you want to identify what managers are actually going to be working for this project, when do they start, and also what are the uh, tasks that they're going to be doing. So what we do is we start out by identifying the project area that, that this guy's uh, Manning for as far as the manager. He's the lead engineer. In some cases they're calling him the chief engineer and you can put whatever you want in there as far as the, the task that this guy's providing as a manager. As this can see down here, this is the production manager and maybe you have somebody who is doing other things that are managing the project and these are the lead people that are doing. In this case, when you add the person in there, you have choices of all the people that you're adding in as employees and then what you're doing is you're tying the actual project over here to the guys that are in that project. So, for example, we have Martin Yates and we have Fred Smith, but Ben Cole is actually doing another project. If he was going to be a part of this project, then you would create a record in here for him as what he's covering in the project. In this same sense, what you're doing is you're putting the start dates in and the end dates. Now, this is critical. Don't leave any fields blank because what happens you're you're allocating time and expenses for this particular project manager and in the same way we're going to be doing this for the employees when we're doing the scheduling and planning what we're doing is we're saying start and end dates 
and the actual end date because sometimes you'll schedule it and all of a sudden it's either shorter than or greater than the actual amount that was scheduled. In the same way, you can come back to the screen for this project manager and give a uh, status and the status could be any one of these things and of course you can edit those and come in and add your own statuses that you want to have for your company based on the kind of work that you do. In this particular case I've just added a few as example. The next thing you're going to be seeing here is the budget status. Are we in research? What are we doing and who's doing it? If this man's doing the budget research or one of these other tasks as the project manager you're going to want to know what he's doing and then again you can go ahead and then edit this field and add those things in there. The reason there's a white space here at the top, rather than try to back out the data that's in there, you can click the white space and say OK, and it will clear in, or in some cases you may have to go in and double click and then pass that back out as far as uh, exiting it. Click away and then back in, and now go back in and pick what you actually want in there. In this case, budget sourcing might be what this guy's doing. You could put that in there or vendor selection or outside services, engineering review, so forth. In this case, we're going to put him back in as scheduling. And in this particular case, we're not differentiating as far as the task that this person is going to do as far as the project manager, just his area of expertise that he's going to be working in and what company he's doing this for as far as the project is concerned. Now, I'm going to show you something very quick just to indicate something that you need to know. I'm going to click out of here and I'm going to go over to the marketing list view. I was in the project 01. If I click on two or any of the succeeding ones later on that are different projects, you'll note right away that when you come in here and you look at project managers over on this side, I have Ben Cole, but I also have manager ID number two for the project number two. The, de the days on this side can overlap if a project manager is working in two different projects at the same time. You, meet, you need to make sure that you don't have overlap where it is taking all the time. So what we're going to do when we go to manpower and budget scheduling over here, we can differentiate in this period of time between the 10th and the 14th. If he's working full time in this area, we'll put that in. We haven't talked about it yet, but I want to come back and explain. We're also going to be using the calendar to schedule things where if you look at the calendar and you look at the person and you see overlaps on any one day, week, month or year, you can see overlaps and then ask the questions why this person is going to be working through two different projects at the same time. That can be a conflict as far as what work is getting done and on schedule. And of course, if they're ended and they've completed their task, you want to make sure to come back to the screen and end that particular task for that for that particular project. And that can be true maybe at some point during the project. Say, for example, uh, the chief engineer is going to stay around, but maybe one of the engineer guys, as far as doing engineering, is all done and all that work is being done. What you're saying is the project manager is working with other people in the team. In this case, it's lead engineering or production. And as he's working through his element that he is assigned to, he could also move over as a project manager and be multitasking and doing other things on other elements. For example, maybe he's doing specifications and we have him in doing specifications and managing people that need to do specifications for the O2 project. So those are some of the things you're looking for. Now over here on uh, project notes, you can put anything that is an exception to, common to, uh, on commenting different things that are related to this project manager or he may be putting them in there himself where it says even though I'm working through the 10th and 14th I'm only doing four hours a day where I'm putting four hours a day on another project. These are important things to do because when you go over and start looking at the project manager's time which is the next one we're going to talk about. Let's go over and look at that now. In the project manager's time he's taking his start and end times and hours and then the project total hours that he's putting on for that element that he's working within. In this case, it's budget estimating in the 2.1 area. Now, this is an error over here. This No, it's not. Uh, over here, what you'd be doing is you'd take the time that, as a project manager, that he's assigning his time to for that particular period, for that particular task and element that's being worked on over here. This helps anybody that's in the organization to understand where that project manager is working, what he's doing as far as the project, and what task he's doing, and what is the status within that particular area right now. And of course, like before, you can also change these and edit them, and you can see what they are. Uh, it's not scheduled yet. It's in planning, initiating, schedule, in work, work delay, pending parts, 
rescheduling, work stopped, and task completed. And of course, you can add your things in there that are work tasks that are related to this particular uh, element on this particular uh, schedule ID number. And the person that is in here, of course, up here at the very top is the project manager for that particular work job. And now in this case, he should not be the, the, the guy that's in here because you can see he's working on project uh, one as far as the project is concerned. So there's a conflict in his time. So what you need to do is go back and assign him into that project in project two and add him up here in the project manager for Fred Smith and have him on that project as well. If he's sharing task time, then you know he's on that one. He would re-show up in here as Fred Smith with a P10005 time. So that would tell you that he's spreading his time between the two different projects. If you've ever worked in a large organization, like the one I worked in where there were 54 different companies worldwide, what we would do is we would share effort between, say like for example, we had a big office in England and London. And if they were coming over to our country to do some project work and they were gonna be assigned to doing something, then you have to add them to both your managers if they're managers or your employees if they're employees. And then you have to set up all this information. Then you put it on the calendar and add it in the calendar so you see how it looks in the schedule and what the start and end times are. Now, what happens, I'm going to have a lot of this information you're looking at here available in the calendar so you do not have to pop back and forth between the marketing screens and the calendar in order to see the information and how to schedule people. The calendar is a visual interpretation of what you're seeing here in these screens, both for project managers and for employees and for vendors and other things. Now understand that when you get to the calendar, you can have separate calendars for each individual person, including project managers. And you can also have, say for example, production for production calendar and have a separate calendar for the production and run that for multiple projects. You don't have to have it just for one. And you can see the overlay of what times and what things are going on on different projects for each person that's in your organization. So it's quite extensive. And you can see in here, in this case, we're talking about work task notes rather than project manager notes. If there's a certain work task that is being done or supervised by Fred Smith, then he can put notes in there based on what he knows about that project when it comes to project manager timesheet. For example, if he's working on something and he runs into a stop work stoppage, he can st change the status, status to work stoppage and then put the reason for the work stoppage. Now he has to look at his schedule to see how the work stock stoppage is going to affect other things he's supposed to be doing later or things that he was supposed to have already concluded. That's why we have the calendar to take a look at see how we're going to shift time around to keep him moving on we, either project he's working on. And if there comes to a point where there's an issue and he can't do his tasks because he's overlapped, they call that lead and lag. We can put some time in on the calendar and move things around and change the times over here and then have those reflected on the calendar. Okay, the next video we're going to be looking at and by the way, I haven't covered it yet. Let me do this before I get out of here. We can go to the portal. And in the portal, typically there may be, it may look different and also have more area where you can actually see things as far as portals are concerned. Whatever data you put in on that new record that you created in the uh, marketing screen will be reflected over here. And it's very important to note up here, it says do not add records in these screens. These are for editing only and they should not be uh, used for adding new records. You cannot do that. In fact, you will cause problems in the application because it's supposed to follow the uh, identification number for the linking file for this. So for example, if we go back over here to the marketing, project marketing, these are the input screens. They create records. The portals, if you click on a portal, you do not go to a portal and create a record. You start it here and you can edit as soon as it's created. So for example, if I was in uh, this particular one for the initial marketing meeting for uh, Ben Cole, and I wanted to be able to do something where I want to add something in this area, start it on this screen in this area, then you can go over in the portal record, either view it, edit it, but do not ever create records in portal in a portal. List views have a little different kind of a thing. You can do searches in list views and in portals when you go to the portal record. In fact, that's probably the biggest reason for having the portal is that if you want to go over and do a search for, say, for example, everything in the P2555 uh, here, 
uh, zeros, then that's what you would do. You go into the portal, you go over there, and then you do a find over here to search for that particular thing, like start a search. And maybe I want to find everything that has to do with a certain input, like everything uh, the people in marketing or just anything like that as far as the data that's required over here that has to have information in it. Okay, what, what there's also list views that are on these screens where you can click to go to a list view to see all the data for that screen and what is required as far as uh, what you're looking at for the information that is in the project marketing listing. So these are all listings and when you want to go back in, say I want to reread or re-edit this or look at things, I can just click the edit and go back in. Now note, I was in a Project 2 series, and now this is a different ID, I'm in a different record, I can move through a list view and pick other things that I want to go view. So there's a lot of things you can see in here. Notice that I have comments in these fields to make it easier to understand in this example record what is in here and what needs to be added or edited as far as the data that you're putting in here. Okay, let's go back over. We're going to go back over to the projects things. The next video we're going to be looking at is the project manager's time sheet as far as what it's supposed to do uh, as far as the outcome. Now we, we were in there and we looked at it, but we didn't spend a lot of time in here as far as the product sheet is concerned. Uh, if you have questions or need answers to things that I'm going through, make sure that uh, you contact us through the support at ontargetsolutions.biz. Okay, the next uh, thing we're going to start covering is the manpower portal in the next video. And then we'll Kind of somewhere in here, we're going to be opening up the calendar and identifying things that the calendar does. Okay, this is the end of this video. Thank you.